Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Pro Dota Com tier. I am Luminous and joining me alongside is Purge Gamer from Ghost of Gamer and of course Purge Gamer from YouTube. And we're casting the defense a grand finals. This is game number two or three, two depending yes. how you look at it. Um, right now the series tied at one game apiece. If you haven't checked out game number one yet, please, please do so. Go to Purge Gamer's YouTube channel. It's YouTube slash Purge Gamer and it's probably one of the best game I, I've ever witnessed. I just watched a live stream. I'm not casting in it, but still it, it, it was a very, very good game. So pause this one and go back to go go to Purge Gamers YouTube channel and check that one out before watching this one. because uh, we're gonna be spoiling a lot of that right yeah, here. Right? It was it was pretty awesome. Here come the spoilers. Um Navi played an anti mage last game and uh, they didn't quite ever get a pushing advantage so it turned into a hard carry farming fest. Both teams defended very well. Uh, a couple interesting picks. Navi drafted a warlock which is very surprising. And he actually maxed upheaval first, which never really, I felt, did a whole crap load. Um, Fatal Bonds was good, but uh, never really worked quite like they thought it was. I think they expected to get a farm advantage, and then when they had a farm advantage, they would upheaval their entire team, and that, then it was over, because they can't run away at that point. So, right. um, didn't really ever execute properly for Navi, but once again, I think that was just because the, the early game didn't quite go the way that they expected it to. Yeah, and, and Dendi's Lesh Track, oh my goodness, some of the most amazing Lesh plays I've seen, so yeah. for that alone, it's worth checking out. So so go watch that one, but this is game number three or two, but the game is tied one apiece, so a little more confusion here. And we have Quantic uh, picking the second pick here right now, they go with Windrunner and Anti-Mage immediately being picked up, Shadow Shaman is Quantic's choice, and we're looking at a lot of disables so far just with two picks from Quantic. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. And once again, guys, this is a best of five, so this is not the deciding game here. We have at least two games to go here. It's not at all over. And Shadow Shaman with the Windrunner on Quantic with Anti-Mage once again on Navi, so expecting to see it fast. Um, Vlad's probably picked up. I expect to see an Enchantress here, probably. Uh, possibly an, a Sand King as well. Uh, Navi really does like the Sand King. Got, got pretty shut down last game, actually. And kept getting killed before he got his Epicenters off, which was just uh, evidence of how good Quantic is. They know you got to kill that Sand King. Don't let him get his ulti off. Mania literally spent all of his time in those early team fights just looking for the SK and getting uh, Disables off to get him killed. So that was a very, very nice play by Mania there. Um, now be taking their time here. A uh, minute 20 left, and they're not quite sure who they want to go for yet. I was in game one, so for my sake, or for the viewers that did not watch it, uh, can you tell me what were the bans, the initial two two bans for each team? I know uh, Dark Seer was, was immediate for for Navi, of course. But yep. What else? There was a Dark Seer, Invoker, Chen, and a Shadow Shaman. Okay. And uh, I think Navi picked up Anti Mage. Or no, I'm sorry. The first pick was Quantic. They grabbed a Nature's Prophet, and then Navi went Anti Mage with Enchant, I think. Okay. And then, yeah, I believe that's what happened. So right now, I think Navi might be thinking about that enchant again. Chen is out of the pool. They do have their jungling uh, puppy. I, I feel like puppy got shut down really hard in the last game because of the mobility of Quantic. Instead, they're going to go for some big pushing uh, coming from the Enigma and, of course, Vengeful Spirit. So whether it's going to be a farming Venge or a support one, I think it's more like a support one this one, this time. Yeah. It's got to be. They already have an anti-mage. There's no way that they're going to go for a Venge semi-carry as well as an anti-mage hard carry. It's just, it's not something they do. Whenever they do pick up the Vengeful Spirit, he's literally their, one of their only two carry potentials. Um, that they, they, they wouldn't have a hard carry with a another Vengeful Spirit. And another Mirana pick, Quantic, really liking uh, their Mirana. Um, Angel playing very, very good in the last game. Escaped a couple smoke ganks and awesome things like that. And second round bans, Sand King as well as a Broodmother. Um, both teams are very capable at both of those two heroes, so... Uh, I think that's pretty adequate. Yeah, judging from how fast these bands and picks were, uh, they kind of need to realize what they want to go next, and it's just going through the rhythm. So the Sand King band, the Broodmother band, just definitely heroes that they don't want to play against. Of course, Minute Shout, this is a own 3D tournament, so uh, they are the sponsors. Join Dota has doing, been doing beautiful coverage throughout the entire tournament, so if you want to watch any previous uh, defense games, and there were a lot of good ones, go check them out on Join Dota. Of course, I think Purge is actually casting a lot of defense games as well, so you could check him out on his YouTube channel. Yeah, I've casted a decent amount. I haven't uploaded a ton recently. Uh, I did a couple the last few weeks, but uh, that was about it. So, yeah, lots of really awesome coverage all over the place. I've been casting the defense a long time here, and we're going to see a Pudge ban. Respect! That's I know respect. Navi is going to pick it eventually. I, maybe, maybe if they get up. I think they're going to be a little scared now. They might go more conventional. They tried out the Warlock last game. It did not work out. I think that is going to make them play a little bit more serious because there's a 1,500 euros on the line here. Yep. So that's a pretty big deal. A lot of money on the line. I'm, I'm just wondering, when is Quantic going to bust out that Outworld Destroyer pick? 
Now, of course, when Navi, whenever they play the anti mage, they play a very pushy one Vanguard, Manta, Vlats. That's kind of the big three items. Mm -hmm. And uh, Destroyer is actually pretty, de uh, pretty weak against the push. However, he counters anti mage hardcore. Like every one of his ability counters anti mage. The disruption is great against them. The, uh, the orb hits will destroy Manta Illusion very quickly. But it is going to be tiny here from Dendi. And I'm not too sure whether you got a glimpse of what Tiny did against Dignitas the other day. I missed it, actually. Oh, my what God. Uh, well, spoiler alert, If you do, that was a really good game as well for the viewers out there that want to check it out, cover your ears or pause this game, whatever. Um, Dignitas, for the lack of better words, were handling Navi. Like, they were just owning Navi pretty hard. Navi somehow won one team fight. You're like, oh, one team fight. And then we had an Acceptor, AC Tiny, just completely got three lanes of racks in one minute. He, he three three lane racks three lane racks by himself well you know there was a venge and you know whatever else but acceptor like every racks was four hits it's like oh one racks done let's go on blink to the next one he had an ac i think he had a mask of madness at one point wow <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's gonna be dendy's hero we're gonna see how Vols oh actually who the hell's gonna play this storm who knows, who knows? Uh, i'm gonna expect puppies on the earth shaker probably aa i'm sorry Puppy playing Enigma, Earthshaker, I'm um, AA playing uh, Venge, and uh, I don't know, uh, Dendi, Light of Heaven, who knows? One of those guys. Light of Heaven, Storm, Dendi, Tiny, and then Havos, Anti Mage, yeah. But right now, Quantic going for one of their uh, famed heroes, the Marana plus Tie Hunter combination. Tie Hunter is going to get farm, go for the quick pipe, and uh, let's see what they can going to go with. Uh, Quantic's working with a clock here, they do not compare at all. Yeah. In terms of late game, they do have a Marana, but as we saw from the last game, uh, Anti Mage just kind of manhandles Marana. Looks like we have to remake the game. Um, I don't know what's going on. We're remaking instantly. So let's not leak the world. Yeah, man, I don't want to lose my broadcaster slot, so. Luckily, everybody got back in immediately. I was I was scared that that was gonna be a big timer. Whew. You just leaked the password to the Fraps recording, didn't you? No, I didn't. I actually manually, yeah, man, I leaked the password. So like two days later, they were like, ah, oh, <laughs> dude, two could've days later, people are gonna know what the password is. It's a big deal. Well, it's just gonna be CMO. Oh no, it's gonna be AP. Nice. Is it right? Yes. So I'm, I'm I don't know what the laning is gonna be for the rating team. It's weird. Um. Who's gonna solo top? Storm, maybe? I don't know. Venge, 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 uh... I think Damn. they're gonna do dueling mid. We'll see, we'll see. It's hard to guess, but let's talk about who is playing what. On the Radiant side, Light of Heaven is gonna be playing... Ooh, it's not gonna be Puppy on his famed Enigma. It's gonna be Light of Heaven instead. Arzar gonna be playing the Ventral Spear. Puppy on the Storm! Jungle Storm? Yes, indeed! He's got wards, he's playing support! My goodness! Anti-Mage, of course, being handled by Havos and Dendi playing his famous, famous Tiny. It's gonna be pretty sweet. One second, I cannot click on the mini map, so I have to scroll all the way across the map slowly to find <laughs> the other place. All right, uh, we have uh, Link gonna be playing uh, the Mirana here. Uh, still no mini map. That's really frustrating. Uh, we have Angel you? playing the Shadow Shaman. Mania is on the Windrunner, and then finally we have Rise playing the Enchantress. And the last tier is gonna be Miggle on the Tide Hunter. Wow, both teams switching people up on heroes. Uh, it's gonna be a support windrunner. Tide is farming, I do believe. Go. Yes, bring a protection on top of him. So he's gonna be going for a quick Basilius. Rise playing the jungle, as he always do. Link playing the Marana. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at this jungle storm and how he's gonna do it. It's gonna be a lot of pulls involved, and it is gonna be some of their standard pushing, uh, pushing kind of trialing. But neither storm or Venge are decent pushers. So are they going for kills or what? I have no idea what Navi's trying to do here. Well, at the very least, if Storm Spirit picks up something like an Arcane Boots, he can catch people out of position, especially heroes like um, Mirana, of course. Um, if she doesn't get her leap off in time, even jumping on heroes like Enchantress can be really, really great. Uh, just bursting her down. Even Shadow Shaman, I mean. He's probably just going to go for a fast Arcane with a Black King Bar and try to focus on it. But I'm interested to see what they do. Navi, once again, going for weird picks, and they don't care. And I'm excited to see them like do weird stuff like this all the time. A lot of Euros on the line. Uh, 15, 1500, you said, the difference Yeah, I was? believe the difference is 35 and... 5k for first and second place. Ooh, that's that's a lot of money. It is going to be dueling mid. Again, Puppy playing the jungle storm. So he's going to be 
uh, doing some stack pulls, I, I do presume, on the level 1 camp, or maybe doing some pulls on the bot lane. You see Ventral Spare circling around against the uh, Mirana, but Mirana with the double damage, I think he's going to trade hit. No, there's a lot of damage being done on Link. Link's going to leap out immediately. I think he's going to turn around and, you know, he's not going to turn around and get some pot shots off, but he's going to burn a Tango and be back in lane very soon. Yeah, that's definitely true. Dendi on the mid lane, just sitting on a single salve, going for four stats as well as that salve is going to allow him to grab that pretty fast bottle here up to four into gold currently. Um, kind of interested to see how he goes. Uh, cool. Angel going to be doing a lot of harassment against him. That's very important. Dendi's armor is, or Tiny's armor is very low at start, but his base damage is really huge. So you have to harass him away from the creep, creep wave, or he's going to outlast it you every time. Yep. And of course, the rune is going to be absolutely key as both teams have the wards up for the runes. Both these heroes are so mana dependent to nuke and harass and push and uh, it's going to be completely vital who gets a bottle first. It seems like Dendi should have the advantage in that department but a couple of Aether Shock could change uh, everything. In terms of top lane here we do have Light of Heaven. He's having okay times. He actually got halfway up to level 1 but look, do look towards uh, Mania to keep harassing him away from the lane. And there's a smoke gang coming from Ryze, there's a centaur behind him, looks like an enigma is very likely to die, there's the enchant, here comes the stun as well, here's the gush as well, and Light of Heaven a lot of trouble, great blocking from Ryze, and that's going to be first blood, Windrunner picks that up there, very nice gank, and that's the problem with uh, soloing an enigma on the top lane, it's so easy to gank him. Yep. Indeed, and I think they are going to try to get a little bit of push going on, Basilius is picked up, it is turned on, and uh, plus two armor on these creeps. Do you look towards Enchantress grabbing one of the enemy creeps and maybe even pulling away? Would you have Live and Teeping back? That's very dangerous. He might actually eat an enchant as well, but he's very, very far away from uh, the enemy heroes. He should, he should be fine. But look at that. A lot of creep waves already stacked up on the top tower. And both these teams, Navi and Quantic, love to do this. Taking down that tier one tower very early on and grab themselves some gold advantage. Yeah, it's very, very big to do this. Uh, Tidehunter now level 2, they're going to clear out these creep waves pretty fast. The Eidolons are spawned though, and that's going to help keep them alive. Enchant actually steals one of them, and it's going to steal some last hits, possibly du duplicating those Eidolons and getting some more damage out. But tower already down to 450 damage, not really a whole lot that uh, Navi can do about this. So they're just going to lose this first tower most likely. I don't think Light of Heaven will be able to defend this. He's going to get gold on his own Eidolon, it's pretty awesome. And Miguel just trying to force him back, taking some tower hits. Could be a little dangerous. There's still decent creeps up, and tower is down to 250 HP. Light of Heaven only has mana for one stun here, possibly a spawn, and they're going to back off. He does is able to hold that off just barely. Yeah, somehow defended that one, and uh, Enchantress is going to go back jungle, find a better creep, and then come back again. Now the ganking path from here now becomes, I'm not sure if you can see me drawing on the minimap, but uh, the viewers will see, um, you can actually backstab very easily against an enigma like this and dive with a Chen, Chen creep or Enchantress creep tanking that one. Uh, so right now Light FM has got to be extremely, extremely careful. Back in the mid lane here, Angel looks like doing a little bit of bottle curling. Can I get out nuke by the Tiny at that point? Tiny very low in terms of mana as well. I do believe he is bottle curling as well. So both teams tr not giving away any leeway on the mid lane. Yeah, it looks like Puppy's picked up a bottle. That's going to help him jungle decently. Uh, the reason you grab that is because it balances out the HP and the MP that you lose by jungling, but he will be able to do decent AoEs. Uh, there was a spot out there. They're going to find the Enchantress. Unfortunately, Puppy does not have a Vortex. But that's not really a big deal at low levels like this. The Vortex wouldn't really be that useful with only one or two levels into it. So uh, having a big static remnant and placing those very nicely can be very nice. Yeah, Ryze trying to make the same gank that he did earlier. Uh, unfortunately, no smoke of the seed this time. No, in uh, But I think he's going to get into position. The enchant's going to slow him down. The net's going to be in position. Where's the net? Get the net off. Net. And we're going to have a Gale. Power shot's going to be there as well. Light FM, can we go down? One more hit's going to do it. Yes! The long spear of that enchantress. And I think that is going to mean the tower is going to go down for the top tier one. Yeah, it's not very like uh, Navi to have a lane like this where... They're at a significant disadvantage. I don't know if they just weren't expecting it. It is definitely kind of a weird lane. Dendi in a little bit of trouble. He's going to have a bottle. No mana left on Shadow Shaman. He's going to be able to bottle off his HP and most likely survive. Decent damage done by the Shadow Shaman, though. And the top tower does fall down. Anti Mage getting a kill in the bot lane against uh, Link playing the Mirana there. So that's also a nice little advantage for Navi. But they have lost the tower, and now Quanix immediately turning this into a tier 2 push. Yep, and summoning those uh, trolls, and here comes Puppy. Puppy has contributed literally little to nothing so far to his team, simply because right now Stormster, as a hero early on, he's fairly useless, and uh, he's trying to get his way to level 6. Once he does level 6, he could be a, a full ganker, not the one that farms for, you know, a BKB and a Hex, but just, you know, a, gank a ganker that may go for Urn or some cheap utility item and help out his team the carry the heroes is still going to be the tiny it's still got oh nice war trap back in the mid lane Dendi gets war trap he drops an avalanche it's going to go down regardless these wards although not hitting the tower will clear the creep wave very quickly then he blames lag 
And uh, Angel says, yo, bro, don't trip. Huh. Uh, that's pretty rough, though. Once again, Tiny, very low armor, so Serpent Wards do a huge amount of damage if he does get the Ward Trap off there. Dendi's tool is pretty much just limited to the uh, Avalanche as well as the Toss, so that makes a pretty big difference. Um, he's going to do even more Bottle Crowing. Both of these guys doing tons of Bottle Crowing. Storm Super Pop in his regen. He's going to get healed up from that. Possibly going to try to take some kills on some wards. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to one-shot these, though. Uh, it's going to take two hits there, and the creep or the wards still clearing creep waves. Yeah, uh, the wards should be out very momentarily. And uh, then he now giving back his lane. Do we? Are they all chatting it up? And I do believe Holy Master says, you know, let's let's calm down. <laughs> yeah, Denny's saying it's probably his internet that lagged him, so unfortunately for him, losing that out there. Uh, not a good time to lag, that's for sure. Tidehunter now has an energy booster picked up, going to be making fast arcane boots, probably maxing out the anchor smash pretty fast. Um, <laughs> they used, people used to do that, man. In Dota 1, people used to DDoS uh, players during tournaments and stuff. It's pretty annoying, but oh well. All right, we are six minutes into this game. Quantic with three or two kill lead here. Let's check out how we're doing in terms of farm. Hovos leading the chart, 44 CS in six minutes. That's seven, and there's only eight creep kills in a minute. That is absolutely insane if you think about the math. 36 here on the Rasta. We have 18 here on Enchantress and 16 on Titan. Not the best farm on Quantic. On the Radiant side, it's a little bit better. Puppy's got 27, although most of them are neutral. Sandy's got 25 and 14 on the Light of Heaven. But uh, with that, with that tower, top tower being destroyed, the gold different chart is going to show that the dire leading by a measly like 100 gold. Actually, not too much. Yeah, and that's that's pretty amazing considering that uh, Quantic doesn't have a lead. They have a tower up. There's no towers that Navi is taking yet, and even still, the gold advantage is very very neutral. And this is kind of something that we saw in the last game as well. Quantic got a little bit of early advantage, but Navi was doing such a good time or such a good job just farming all of their different lanes that it didn't really matter. They still had. Uh, we're keeping the game very, very equal. And with Anti-Mage getting free from, oh my god, he bought a Hand of Midas. Yeah, I was about to point that out. And this is a Hand of Midas against a pushing Enchantress, a pushing Rasta, and a Quantic team that love to get a mid-game mid -game engagement because they have a farming Tide. Here comes the Tide. He's level 5 and have no Ravage yet. They just want a kill against Dendi. And just put, talking about the pushing power of Quantic, look at the Tide Hunters. He's maxing Anger Smash, wants a little bit more AoE damage, and Tide Hunter... He's just scoping out that tiny, tiny pauses. Little does he know, the jaw theme is in the background. <laughs> yes, indeed. And it's actually shark theme. It works out very nicely. So, yep. um, anti mage is going to find the enchantress though. So, not looking too good for Rise here. He does have boots. At least he looked like he was going to put down an observer ward. Um, he's not happy. His internet's actually lagging here. So, um, and that would be really sad if there really was DDoS or something like that. But we probably won't find out. <laughs> Um, 500 gold on anti mage most likely. Do you think he's gonna need a battle fury or a vanguard? I think maybe a vanguard. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, just given that this is a Navi anti mage, they rarely go for things like battle fury. Although, if you have 30% increase in attack speed, it might be a very lucrative choice to increase your farm. And he did go for minus first, so maybe farming is what he has in mind. Uh, but again, you're against very, very heavy pushing lineup. The Enchantress creeps do a lot of damage. The Rasa do a lot of damage in terms of uh, Serpent Wards. So I think Vanguard should be the better choice. But I think, you know, whatever Havos makes, I, it, it's, it's, you could call it either way. <laughs> yeah, at the very least, he needs to grab a Pomeranian Shield. I think that's an absolute must to this yes. game um, because of those Serpent Wards. If you can guarantee block 20 of those damages, even if you get Ward Trapped, you're reducing it by quite a bit. Looks like he's going to restart Dota 2, perhaps. Uh, maybe reboot his whole computer. Uh, should be okay with that. Not a big deal. Uh, there's 900 gold on Windbringer. Looks like she's able to almost grab um, Phase Boots. Uh, maybe she'll go for Arcane either. Uh, I'm not really sure what Mania's going to do there. Um, and where did where did Winner show up? That was like a support role on the top, right? And uh, he's already got a lot of gold. Yeah, she was able to get a lot of Cisco. The tower, I'm sure, helped out a lot. And they did a very nice lane switch. Ling was having a tough time. He's only level two and a half. Oh wow! Wow, look at Arzar. He was harassing um, the priestess back so very much so. And now, even though he's on the top lane, which can arguably be a little bit easier, he's up against a level six Enigma. So. I, I don't know how Link's going to recover from this, and this is their hardest carry. Like, Quantic Link has to get hugely farmed uh, for for uh, for them to have a chance in the mid-game. And mm -hmm. he's really far behind compared to Anti-Mage right now. Yeah, or at the least has to have maybe a Yasha or a Manta when the mid-pushes happen. Because when Quantic drafts the Tidehunter and gives him farm, at least the last time that they ended up doing this, 
Um, they got their core items up. They had a pipe finish, they had a mech finish, and they pushed at 20 minutes. Despite Navi looking moderately strong, it was just all of a sudden they decided to push. They were able to tank the AoE ultis, and they just won the game. So if we see that similar situation coming, Priest of the Moon has to have some kind of contribution to the game. I think last time it was a Priest of the Moon who grabbed a fast drum of Endurance. Yes, I'm going to call it that. It's going to be a fast drum. Uh, I feel like right now Ling is so far behind of Swarm. He's going to go treads, a couple of Wraith Bands, and a drums maybe because if he's going to go for the Manta style, he's going to be contributing nothing to his team aside from spells, mm -hmm. which is going to be nice, but it's not nearly enough what he needs to do for his team. Yeah, it definitely could be better. It looks like uh, Enchanter is actually skilling Enchant over Heal. Usually you make this decision when you decide to be more aggressive than defensive. And I think this is an okay decision because she is pretty highly leveled. But once again, level 2.5 Priest of the Moon, that's really significant. And the eventual spear on the bot lane is level 5. Like the supporting, pulling hero yep. has a bigger level advantage. That is crazy. He's going to have his swap right off the bat uh, very soon here. And Anti-Mage as well is level 7. Is that the highest hero in the game? Uh, he's level seven. Yeah, he's he's got. Oh, and Shadow Shaman's level eight. But he does. He did get that kill on Denny, which uh, makes a significant impact on your EXP. Right. And uh, what, there's one thing about Quantix pushing, which will give you a lot of gold. But Marana is a hero that needs both gold and EXP. So uh, do look towards Quantic playing about four v five against the enemy lineup for for the next couple of minutes because Link's gonna somehow try to find a lane and find some EXP. Dendy still trying to reconnect. I wonder if anyone just snuck a peek at, at uh, Toby's stream right now and be like, oh, well, there's the Invis in the mid lane. <laughs> yeah. That's very yeah, unfortunate. That's definitely possible. Have you ever noticed that Enigma looks like a genie? It's my first time I noticed that. That was my first initial reaction when I saw Enigma. I was like, who the hell is this guy? Like, why is there no lamp though. behind him? I like the uh, the little effects. I also like that the Eidolons were mid-death animation when the game got paused. <laughs> They're like Sorry. praying for God or something. <laughs> no! As they sink into the earth. Yeah, Enigma's going to grab a Sol Ring here in a second. He's got the gold for now with the Sage's Mask up, and once, since he is up against a level 2 Priest of the Moon, what can she do? She can arrow and run. That's it. Even if she lands an arrow, she's got no damage contribution coming out from her auto attacks at this point. Enigma is definitely a bigger threat. And it looks like he is actually maxing out the Eidolons first, which is kind of interesting. But that's going to allow them to push and counter push a little bit better. They won't be as good as at ganking, but I think when you're a soloing top situation like this, I think that's a pretty smart decision. Yeah, there's about two standard builds on Nigma. If you're jungling, it's generally better to max the Malefice, because uh, taking just with two levels of the uh, demonic conversion, you jungle about the same rate. Sure, leveling up the the third and fourth point allows you to jungle a bit faster, but it's generally it's better to have a higher and more important stun. Ganking out of jungle, you make yourself a little bit more useful towards your team if you max your Malefice. But if you are laning, generally maxing Demonic Conversion is a better choice because they give you more pushing power. And you, you're mostly playing solo as Enigma when you're laning anyway, so uh, the chances to use your stuns are few and far in between. So mm -hmm. the uh, Enigma de lasting damage, uh, the pushing power of the Demonic Conversion is generally better. So those are the kind of the two standard builds. Uh, in terms of alternating in between the demonic version and Malefice. Mm -hmm. And we are still waiting for Dendi to get back here. This has been a uh, finals plagued with uh, defeats and, and just a lot of problems. How many? Damn, there's a few Iron branches in this game. Uh, it seems like everybody has some. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever there's a long pause, then I cast a Waga from uh, Infuse. He's like, okay, time to count GG branches. <laughs> I was thinking about doing the same thing. Uh, there's, there's quite a bit. Um, 10, 12, 14 on the Radiant team. <laughs> uh, How was game seven, one, nine, though? I heard game one was a lot of lags. It was uh, it was really frustrating. It, it was basically 10 minutes of no problem, 10, 15 minutes. Game was fine. And then things got really epic lag, like everybody lagged. Like the game would just stop for a second. And uh, eventually there was a, a near disconnect, like where it said a warning you're disconnecting from the game kind of a thing. Wow. And... Like, that's how bad it was lagging, and then eventually that did actually go through and drop the game. And then we had to remake. Remaked into the game, played that for a couple minutes as we got Valve to turn off the uh, the view from IP, or the Dota TV, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then the, the server died again, or something. We all got disconnected and had to remake a third time, so basically the second remake counted for nothing. So we remade back to the previous spot. Yeah, and, so this, uh, despite then the third game got played out. Despite this is only the set the beginning of the second game, uh the players and the casters have been here for like two, three hours, right? Yeah, three hours. It started three hours ago. And this is the beginning of game two. 
Good stuff. <laughs> it's going to take a toll on the players, I think, because, again, like Purge said earlier, uh, we're, we're at the very least, we're going to have two more games, including this one. And if each game is going to last 40 to 60 minutes, it's... Yeah. It's and there's a lot of Euro people here, man. Uh, especially all the Russian casters. They're even farther east in their time zone. It's got to be, like, really... It's got to be, like, 2 a.m. right now for them. Something like that. Yeah. Very close to so. And by the time it finishes, it's going to be the middle of the night there, so... Well, there's like about, you know... Soon. 30,000 nerds, I'm sure a lot of them European, also watching. They're like staying up right now watching yeah. this game. Looks like we're going to unpause and get right back in this game. Um, then he backs up. Whether he knows about the Invis High Hunter or not, it's going to come in regardless. And there's going to be a stomp. Oh, nice avalanche. A war trap again. No lag on that one. Huge play from Angel. I'm really glad that Dendi spent the last five minutes resetting his computer just to get murdered in the mid lane immediately after the back. Quantico was ready for that. They were probably talking. That's one thing that pauses do. They give you a lot of time to analyze your decisions. You can look around the entire map, see where everybody is at and say, okay, what we should do is get ready to smoke anchor. We should take mid and then change lanes and get a smoke anchor off. And I'm sure that really helped their coordination there uh, as they ganked the tiny. Dude, Angel's like, okay, I'm gonna war trap right now, so uh, get ready. <laughs> it's like a for sure thing. They're gonna yeah. take that mid tower, gonna add a little bit more to go advantage. Tiny pauses again, more lag, I assume. <laughs> A is going to resume. Light of Heaven says, Online Dota in all caps. I don't know what that means. Um, probably he's just complaining about it. <laughs> Where's land mode, man? Where is it? Oh, they, they got to be physically next to each other, I guess. That's true, I guess. That, for that to work. But yes, it seems like Quantic is going to let the snowball keep on rolling as they all diverge to the bot lane or converge is a better word. They are completely scoped out by the enemy wards. Anti Mage does know and he might be surrounded. Gonna be Shaco shot. Uh, we do have the chain stun to definitely do so. Gonna have to be a hex afterwards. Yes, they are gonna get a kill on Anti Mage. That was key because he was farming a little bit out of control. And game number two, Quantic coming out of the gates, shooting very hard. And I think they're gonna grab themselves even more advantage as they pick down the bot tower. Yeah, that was a pretty big mistake there by Anti Mage. Um I mean, part of the problem was, of course, he had the hand in mind. That could have been a Vanguard. I think if he had a Vanguard there, he would have survived, honestly. Uh, the Hex was level one. That's one second to disable. They had no more disables. They could have ravaged, I guess. Um, maybe. I don't know if he was there or not. Tiny gets a kill in the mid lane against Windrunner, though. But, you know, he bought that hand of Midas and he pays for it. He ends up getting killed there. Yep. Just keep checking on Maran's level. She's up to level four now. Dang. Uh, that's, I mean, that's a great number. And Tiny... And Storm Spirit on the way. Storm Spirit, despite not doing so much early on, is level 7. So do look towards him to be a little bit more effective. Now, because he has the jungling storm build, he actually had to put more points into his standard remnant. Generally, you want to have three levels of the pool right now, and he's going to find himself a Marana. That Marana is dead. Oh. That tiny combo. It's good. <laughs> that hurt. And now. Yeah, it does a lot of damage, yeah. man. Um, I think it does. Especially when you're level 4. Much. Yes, especially uh, especially when he gets his grow levels up as well. It does a little bit of bonus damage there. But they're going to push the top lane after ganking that. And that's the only thing going bad for Quantic so far. Priest Moon getting absolutely shut down. So if they can at all turtle this, they might have a good chance. There's a blink forward by Angel. He actually has his uh, thing done already. There's a tight ulti as well and another trap. He gets picked off. That's two deaths in a row here. Man, Hand of Might is not paying off. I don't know if Vanguard would help him survive that one either. In either case, another tower goes down. That is four towers up. And generally, Navis are very good in terms of either pushing a tower down or defending their own tower. They did not do any of them. Uh, if, you, if you look at Navis' lineup, I, I, what is this lineup really tru truly capable of doing in terms of pushing or counter-pushing? They're going to go for Migo and pick him off. Arrow's going to miss. Uh, now Stormster zips right in for the Priestess, gets the pull off as well. I think she's going to be able to leap away, trying to get some block. Marana just leap. No, he already uses leap. Leap comes off cooldown, but he gets picked off. When did he leap? Or why did he leap? I don't know, man, but that was beautiful. That toss from Enigma to get the follow-up stun. The great blocking from Puppy as well. He was like, I'm going to get a Vortex. I'm going to hit you once, and then I'm going to creep block you so my allies can catch up. That was a really, really smooth play there by Navi, picking up that kill. Strong individual play here. Meanwhile, engagement going on the bot lane here. And Angel, look at how bold his move is. Just says, okay, I ha I'm up against about 80 stuns. I'm going to go Arcane into Blink. And I'm going to initiate with a Blink. And I think it paid off just with that one kill. Yeah, and, and he's going to keep being more effective as the initiator. His next item has to be BKB, of course. Uh, but yeah, the Blink so far has been very effective. 
Yeah, and even if he does get a BKB, we're still looking at uh, um, Enigma Black Holes. I love that Black Hole on the top lane, by the way. That was great to cancel the TP, guarantee the killer. Puppy in a little bit of trouble. It's gonna, wow, that almost killed him. 226 extra damage. Tidehunter is in trouble as well. He's gonna have to ulti stun, and is it gonna get a kill? No Miggles, HP is too high, especially with that cloak, and he ends up surviving the combo. Yep, and it looks like they might transition into the mid lane. And right now, Quantic Link is still on the top lane. There's continue stacking one on him. It's going to be Light of Heaven still laning against him. And Link's just having a tough time. Um, and he's not, again, contributing anything to his team. He's got himself a Ring of Basalius. That's pretty odd. I think he got it right from the get-go, right? Or, or very uh, early on. He had it when they took the first, the Tier 2 tower mid. Okay. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. It looks like Enchantress just opted not to grab it. Usually you see an Enchant that up and instead they put it on the Tide. Give him a little bit more survivability. Storm almost goes in there. Spends almost all of his mana to hop in, but he does have his Arcane Boots up, some good mana pool as well. So completely going for this ganking playstyle with him, which I think they'll be able to do decently, especially because they do have the Anti-Mage, who is still farming here. Up to 1k gold. Is he going to get Treads? Vanguard? Who knows, man. Who knows? Uh, we do have some wards, counter warding being dropped down. Oh, there's a sentry ward on the ground, and they know Angel is going to get picked off. What a good sentry ward. Did, did they just know? I think they did. That sentry ward was absolutely fresh. They saw the invis rune in this bottle and showing some superb play here from the supports of Na'Vi. That was puppy for you guys. Yeah, just a little bit of stuff like that makes such a big impact. I mean, there's a game in the defense where they dropped a random sentry ward down and they were able to catch the enemy hard carry because he thought he was invisible and they weren't ex you know just like a little bit of foresight like that uh, and, and, and inference can really make a big difference sometimes there's observer wards placed on there but most importantly people like to smoke gank with their entire team mm -hmm. through that little opening so that might have been why he placed the sentry there but either way it works out they shut down that uh um that uh rasta finally Yep, Enchantress is very tanky at this point. Look at her. Uh, mm -hmm. Bracer, Ogre Club, Point Booster. She's going to be going for the Axe. Going to secure yourself with some mid-game DPS, which might be quite important against, you know, uh, survivors such as Tiny, uh, the Anti-Mage, uh, to I actually make up for a little bit of DPS that they are quite, to be honest, losing from Link, because Link's, again, not doing anything right now. Yeah, that's definitely true. And I think the reason that she adjusted her build this way, almost always see Arcane Boots on Enchantress, she don't want to get one shot by Tiny for the entire game. That's true. And that's not going to happen anymore, because she has as much HP as Tiny does. I mean, he's going to hit harder as he gets another level of grow here in a level, but it's not going to be enough to one-shot her. Um, with maybe some other follow-ups and things like that, it could be a little serious, but once she grabs this Fast Agnum Scepter as well as a wand, um, she's going to be sitting pretty good. Yep. And nice warding here by the Radiant side. Observe ward deep into the top lane. And they, I do believe they saw Quantic Angel coming in. And then Mania just, or whoever playing, not Mania, uh, Light of Heaven, excuse me, just TP'd out. And uh, now Angel wasting a little bit more time. So some great ward coverage. Defensive Sentry Wards, offensive Observe Wards was able to keep their guys alive. And that's what you expect. But here comes a Roshan attempt from the Radiant, or the Dire side. And it looks like Navi is going to clean up the mid creep wave. Navi, uh, Dendi actually does have a regen, so he's going to pick that up, get full mana. Uh, no blink dagger for him. He's at 1900. There's a ward going down by A. I don't think they're going to spawn it. No, Quanta actually decides to back out there, fearing that they saw vision, but I don't think Navi actually knew about that at all. Yeah. And, well, maybe they're. Are they smoke ganking? Are they looking for someone? They're dropping very aggressive wards uh, to prevent enemies coming from into their jungle. And teammate just TP top, so that should be a red light for them to go for the uh, for the Roche if they were thinking about it. it. Looks like they're not, and again, a very deep observer war being dropped down. This game's gonna come down to a lot of positional play. We're 16 minutes in, only 13 kills, and both these teams do not want to get picked off. Because even in such early stage of the game, getting one hero picked off means that you're gonna lose a, a tier one tower or maybe even a tier two tower. It could be a Roshan, especially if let's say uh, Navi lose a hero or two. Um, you could drop down the Mass Serpent Ward, and that's going to be a Roshan. Yeah, and Navi knows that if they just keep everybody not ganked, they're going to win this game. If they don't get ganked, they're going to be fighting 5v5 pushes, which means they probably won't be at much of a disadvantage, and if they can keep farming, Anti-Mage is going to win. And I just checked his gold per minute. He's at 435 at 16 minutes into the game. That's ridiculously high. Usually we see about 350, maybe 380 at this point, and he has gotten ganked twice, but if it wasn't for those, he would be probably very close to out of control at this point. And there, it looks like they are going to go for the Roshan. 120 creep kills in 17 minutes. Again, near seven creeps a minute. That is absolutely insane. They are gonna muscle down Roche. They will be using the Mass Serpent War. Tier does give both teams the knowledge that, hey, we, we know you're there. Uh, but they are gonna, regardless, bring down that Roche. 
Miguel's taking quite a bit of damage from Roche, and he might actually get nuked down before he gets his Ravage, if they actually know his uh, low HP. Who's going to pick up the Aegis? I think Angel should pick it up here. Yep, he does pick it up. Nice. And now we doing a little bit of pressure in the mid lane. Looks like they're gonna did they almost teleport from like five feet away. The arrow comes through. Is it gonna land? No, it's gonna grab a range creep. And there's the blink in disables going on. Hobos. He does get the shackle off. They need to stop it. Nice swap from A. That's gonna make a big difference. Hobos is still alive. The shackle lands on light of heaven, though. He's not gonna get his black hole off and he pops his mech. We yeah, had nothing he can do there. He can now waste his spells there. Unfortunately, he did get shackled. Nice shackle there by Mania. Now we have a Rasa with Aegis and a one kill advantage here. And Quantic sees the blood in the water and then goes straight here for the mid tower. They don't have massive reward, but the right click damage should be enough. Marana has tricks and that's all she had. Blink in here from Angel and she gotta be very careful. That's gonna set up the arrow and the power shot. AA is gonna go down. Angel half HP. No reason for Tiny to blink in that occasion because he still had Aegis. Tiny Dendi does have to blink though. Do you look towards him to jump into the all five clumped up guys? No, he's not gonna go. Too dangerous. It looks like Enchantress lasts this tower. The question is whether Quantic is going to continue, and looks like they will. Alright, Quantic is looking to take the tower now. It is getting lower and lower HP. They still have Venge down. Dendi's in position. He does have a Blink Dagger. This has probably been spotted since it is daytime. Miggle is looking to be aggressive. There's the ball landing in. They're going in. They want to go for uh, Angel, but immediately get Hexed. And while Puppy's going to get picked off right before he gets anything off there, Light of Heaven may be looking for a Black Hole, but nothing is going to happen. Quantic still continuing to push. Mirana just on Power Treads, and the wards are dropped. Mid Tower might be in some trouble here. A is going to be looking for a swap, but... I don't know if it's going to happen. I think this tower is going to fall. There's a gush now, and Dendi's got three seconds till he can blink. Are they going to try to defend it? Tower will drop, and now they might go for a Rex. I think Navi has to wait till Storm Spirit gets up before they can fight this. Yeah, Storm Spirit set back in 15 seconds. They think that they do have going for them. Zlat Ling has no physical DPS, so even though she's uh, constantly hitting the Rex, it's not doing weight, you know, anything at all, to be honest here. But here comes everyone on the high ground again. They have to fight this. Storm back in three seconds, two seconds, one. Time to go. Dandy goes in right now. Avalanche toss on top of everyone. Rabbit comes in. Enigma blinks in. He can't. He dropped the black hole. No black hole just yet. Storm Spirit comes in from my away. No mana. Shackle shot on two. Havol both blinks back out. Stormster need to get out as well. Very low mana. Does have small tiny jump. It's he. Yeah, he's going to be fine. But the Rex is going to go down regardless. And teammate trying to do some work. Dendi comes right back in. Can he defend the range rack at the very least? No, Dendi's going to go down again. Yes, Shackle from Angel. And this is going to be a 20 minute Rex from Quantic. Wow. I was not expecting this kind of game to be played today. Navi had a disadvantage once again. Maybe that Hand of Midas was just a little too aggressive. They knew they had less hard carry potential, and he still goes for the aggressive item choice, and that may cost them this game. I really think it does make a big difference. It's up to 2,500 gold at least, but they lost that melee barracks, and that's going to have to fight them for the entire game. They're going to have to worry about that getting pushed out. Yeah, it depends on how how Quantic want to keep playing this game. Mathematically, it works out that if you if let's say for example, right, this is a pure dairy craft, and that's exactly what we won't see from this game. But for example, if Quantic decides to hey, you know, we'll just farm up for now, that just means that the Quantic has only two lanes of farm. Meanwhile, Navi has three lanes of farm because the big creeps will always be on Navi's side, and even though there are only twenty creeps uh, per gold, it, it's still some gold, right? Uh, but Quantic definitely will push. Do look towards them to uh, keep putting on the pressure either on the top or bottom and uh, continue to drive it home and in that case you have a constant big wave of creeps pushing down Navi and that's more pressure they have to deal with. Yeah this is going to make a big difference. Light of Heaven in the jungle now. He's up to 400 gold. He's going to be probably going for a blacking bar. I don't know if you caught it or not but he did get a black hole off but the Ravage caught him on the outset. So he did get disabled there, not able to activate that. So blacking barks can be very imperative for him. None of the heroes will be able to disable him, but it's going to require those black holes going off for them to win the, the upcoming team fights. This blink dagger from Angel has been absolutely clutch so far. I mean, how many kills have they gotten under the protection of towers just because of the blink forward follow up by the long duration shackles? And I mean, he didn't even max hex second. He went straight for the the shackles because he had such a, a blink dagger advantage in a lot of ways. He had a good farm advantage, so they could set up those kills, and that made a giant impact. Yep, Quantic says we'll give you tier 2 tower on the top, but we'll be taking your bot racks. And they do have every one of the ultimate up except Ty, which is going to be cooling down in just 7 seconds. Yes, Drum is going to be on Marana, and that's going to give them that extra DPS. Immediate zip right now. Ty doesn't have the Ravage. He's going to have it right now. Use it immediately. Can you focus down on Dendi? There's a Shackle and an arrow on top of him. HP being dropped very rapidly. The Ward's not targeting any hero. Still on the tower. They're going to win that fight. Anti Mage blinks back. I think this might just mean the second Rax puppy got a zip back at this point. They got to heal up on Mana and any HP. But finally, I don't think they have the luxury of the time to do so. As 
Yes, Drums is gonna get pop on Link, and they're gonna keep going on the racks. Yeah, not looking good for Navi there. Whoa, Storm Spirit going all the way in there, trying to stop the Priest of Moon. Doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. Going after Mingle now, Storm Spirit buys back. That's what he's trying to do. He wanted full mana. Going on to the Priest of Moon. They do get the kill there, and possibly going on Mania next. Tide is almost dead, but looks like he may just survive. The wards are getting dropped now. Storm Trooper gonna have to back out, and wow, he does get out of there with just about 100 HP. The Focus Fire goes down the melee. Are they gonna be able to pick off Mania? They do. Big mistake by Mania. Too aggressive. There's the swap now going on Rise. Rise in a lot of trouble as well. He's so tanky with that egg and scepter. He's only got 300 HP left. And he will get picked off. Successful defense from Navi? Question mark? Is that a successful defense? They had to buy back a lot, but man, they, they kept the melee racks off, and they got like two kills at the end that they didn't necessarily, that they shouldn't have probably gotten for free. Wow, man, this is gonna be a tight game, because right now, if you look at the go on Havos, he's gonna have his ultimate orb just a little bit more for that Manta style, and once you have the Manta, it suddenly becomes a different story. Um, those illusions, they, though they don't do too much right-click damage, they burn a hell lot of mana. It's gonna give the actual anti-mage a lot more survivability and damage as well. And if you blink in, pop your Manta, it's a big tie changing uh, move, I guess. Yeah, Puppy's gonna get caught though within tower range. He will get picked off there. Once again, in a good blink coming in from uh, Angel playing that Shadow Shaman, making huge plays here. Gonna find a double damage on the bot lane. Uh, Tidehunter picking up a Belt of Giant Strength, possibly going for a Necro 3, I'm assuming. I don't think he would be going for either Basher or uh, maybe a Sanj. Could be a Sanj. Sanj definitely not bad choice, yeah. Uh, it gives him a lot more strength to work with. He's fairly tanky. He's got the pipe up as well. So all he wants at this point is extra HP to get more Kraken's proc. He has only a single level of Kraken. Do you look towards him to put more points into that? Quantic Link again. Drum stream threat up to almost 2k. Go look at how quickly they're clearing the creep wave. Again, Tie Hunter ultimate back in 20 seconds. And that last engagement, Tie Hunter's ultimate was a tiny bit, tiny bit late because he was waiting for it to cool down. Maybe Quantic engage a little bit too soon. But in this case, I think... Yeah, they should be fine in terms of having the high ultimate and everyone else's ultimate up as well. And this might determine how this game's gonna go. If Navi don't defend this racks, even with the anti mage, I think behind being behind two racks is just simply too much. He does have his Manta style finish, though. There will be a smoke, though. Wow, the uh, wave of terror catches them just in time. They don't have a Sentry Ward up is the problem, and they are going to give a little bit of vision. The wards get dropped. Pipe is up as well. They're all going to attack the melee barracks. Storm goes in. Going to hex on somebody. The Black Hole is going to catch three heroes. Only person outside is Enchantress. It's going to do good damage. Tiny looking for a combo, though. And the only person that died in the meantime was Enchant. The Tide Ravage goes off. Going after Ancient Apparition. Sorry, A, the Vengeful Spirit, and wow, they're gonna get the Windrunner as well. Storm Spirit looks like he will die, but anti is trying to do as much as possible. Draining mana from everybody, stun on Link now, and once all of their mana is down, they're not gonna be able to do nearly enough, but the he Hex on and Hobos will be enough, but no, the stun from Dendi is gonna keep them alive, and Dendi looks like he may die, but anti will survive. Yeah, I'm not too sure what anti mage should have blinked out. The wards, no one focused it, and because of that, was able to clean down the melee and the range racks. And right now, Quantic's gonna swing on the mid lane and grab the range racks as well. No, they're gonna back off. Great choice. You don't wanna stick around fighting against an anti mage that could chase you down, especially when Angel's out of mana at this point. 25 minutes in, six kill leads, and two racks is down. Can Navi come back? It's gonna be really tough. This anti mage is gonna have to get a Battle Fury. There's no way that he's gonna be able to push a single lane unless he gets a Battle Fury. If he gets like a Vlad's Battle Fury, he's gonna be fine. He can hold a lane, he can push a lane, no problem, but look at this, just alone. He's taking too much damage from creeps, even with a Vanguard up. He's not gonna be able to hold this off by himself. They, they literally have to get a Battle Fury. They don't have enough AoE. Yeah, Radiant side, the only true AoE they have is Avalanche Toss. I guess the Remnant is pretty sp spammable as well, but that's not nearly enough, so Battle Fury has to be the choice. I'm not too sure whether he wants to do so, because he's only sitting at 1500 HP. You can see how these teamfights have been going. He needs more survivability, uh, and, and Battle Fury, unfortunately, doesn't give too much when it comes to that aspect. So maybe it's going to be Vlad's. We do see... No, Storm Spirit. Was that some illusion? That was an illusion. Minimap. Yep, find an illusion out. there. Yeah, it is definitely confusing. Looks like Navi trying to take a single tower here. Uh, the tower is only at 116. All we need to get is a creep within range and throw a toss on it. But unfortunately, the creep wave is just not quite pushed fast enough. It is so scary to have these mega creeps here up with tier 1. The ulti from Priest of the Moon as well gets the disable off on Anti-Mage. Not going to see a Ravage from Tides on Gulan, but anybody that's picked off immediately. Jumping now on the Windrunner as well. Still disabling Anti-Mage. He will get the blink out probably. Are they going to deny the tower? Yeah, Windrunner does pick that off now. Anti-Mage uh, escaping. But he is slowed a little bit. Will he get another disable? There's the Hex. Wow. And we're going to see another Shackle in two seconds. And he goes down. That might be game. What a play by Quantic. That tower was constantly in deny range. It had more than enough time to deny it. Quantic says, nope, we're going to leave it up as bait. 
initiate with Moonlight Shadow, Shackle Shot, Arrow, and every spell following up. They baited that out. Navi just got outplayed. And here comes a push the other way. Quantic. Did anyone expect them? I think a lot of people are saying Navi 3-0, Navi 3-1. But now with two games played, Quantic's up 2-1 after this. Yeah, it's completely be a 2-0 so far, guys. That's a big deal. I said the same thing. I said 3-1 or 3-2. Stormsword's going in, though. Holy crap, AoE damage picking off the Windrunner right off the bat. A doing a stun as well. And he's going to now back up. Tiny looking for cooldown. Stormsword buys back. Comes on through again. We're trying to get off the Mirana, but I don't think it's going to happen. There's a ball line in trying to get the Rasta. Is it going to happen? Another ball line in. One, two more hits. Needs one more to get the kill. Is he going to grab it? Yes, he does. It's completely out of mana now, though. Likely to be chased down by the rest of the heroes remaining. But there's still four heroes dead. Anti-Mage will respawn here. Puppies are trying to keep them as far away from the racks as possible to delay this. And you... Oh my Did god. Did the attacks miss? Did both the attacks know, miss? <laughs> what? It looks like we have a blink in and a hit into a Mana Void right here. Rise is going to go down as well. Storm died to the creeps earlier. That was a very lousy move. Rise is going to go down as well to the Anti-Mage. Relentless chasing. At the end of the day though, they are still down by 9 kills after this. And 2 Raxes. Okay, Rise is having fun there. The Malphite will score the kill for the Enigma. He's only at 500 gold here. Tidehunter is going to grab an Enigma or a regen re regeneration rune, but both middle and bottom are pushing in. Really, really needs that Battle Fury or some form of creep control. I, I think that's literally the only way they can hold it back. Now we at a huge disadvantage. What's the gold graph looking like? 7,500. It looks a lot more significant, but look at all of the deaths that have come for the Radiant team in the last like 10 minutes. There's so many Radiant deaths and so few dire ones. Yeah. Uh the dire side is losing a lot of gold because every time they push, they die. But Radiant is losing the Raxus. Also, they've been buying back nonstop. Uh, kudos to actually the Navi squad to have, uh, I guess, the, the poise to, you know, say, we got to save her buyback. Even though we need our key items, we got to save her buyback to keep defending. And and the only hope at this point is keep drawing this game out. Hopefully, Quantic make a mistake. I don't, I don't think Quantic will, but that's the only thing that you could just go for at this point here. Yeah, they're definitely up a hill. Uh, there's a lot of very cheap items being purchased. Ventral Spirit uh, just had three bracers. Tank up as much as possible for as little money as possible. Um, Anti-Mage now at 1,700 gold. Uh, possibly going to go for, I don't know, hopefully the Battle Fury. It's going to go swing towards the mid lane. Looks like they know that they're doing a Roshan. And Roshan is down at about 50% currently. Ward's doing good damage. Uh -oh. And are they going to get there in time? Here comes the anti-mage, she's gonna pop his manta and drain all the mana. Roshan's still alive, if they win this, they have a shot. Miguel, no rabbit, gets played, got black hole on top. Dandy doing work, can this be a comeback? Some signs of life from Na'Vi. We do see a two to one exchange right now. Marana immediately buys back. They're gonna focus on Ryze. Ryze just healing up right now. Arrow's gonna hit on Arzard. That's gonna save, and looks like he's gonna turn back and kill Arzard right here. Stormstreet very low on terms of mana. He's gonna be zipping out fine. The Aegis is down, who took the Aegis? Aegis. Who took the Aegis? Is this the storm? Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman's got the Aegis. Shadow Shaman got the Aegis, but the Roshan was killed by the Radiant team, so they didn't get gold from it. But now they're all dead. Four heroes dead. They were able to pick off the Tynator right off the, bit, uh, off the beginning, and Havos apparently ends up dying, has to buy back once again. Not looking very good for Navi. They did get the Roshan kill, but the Aegis dropped, unfortunately. Uh, that was a really great play, though, by Havos. Jumped in, Manta, drained all of the mana out of Tide. He was not able to Ravage because he literally couldn't even pop his Arcane Boots. Could have maybe done a Wand Arcane Ravage, but would have been close. Yep. Illusion. And this game, again, top top any other team would have just died by now. But Na'Vi, I, I somehow feel like they have a chance still. I, I, it's up a steep hill, but this is Na'Vi that we're talking about, so... Maybe it's, maybe it's too soon to call this a, a 2-1 in favor of of uh, Quantic here. Quantic. It's just had a yes. momentary brain dead moment. <laughs> it's understandable, man. We all have those. And he's going to continue pushing. Um, he's going to back up. He's going to score a free TP scroll. Booyah. Dang. Two TP scrolls on Anti-Mage. <laughs> That's pretty, practically the game right there, right? Yeah, man. 135 gold. Yeah, for sure. Three Bracers still on Ventral Spear. Looks like he dropped his item. Uh, dropped one of those and picked it right back up. Um, has no money for TP scrolls, no smoke. Actually, yes, he does indeed have a smoke on the courier. Um, looks like there's a little bit of drying on the map. Quantic is going to be pushing top next. Once again, that's the last racks remaining. Towers at 900 HP out of 1600. And Miggle, once again, he's going for Sanji Nyasha. He's yeah, got a Boots of Elven skin. Le legit stuff. Hell yes. But here comes Navi. They realize they cannot take a fight in their base. In fact, they're going to look out 
uh, go outside base and look for engage and uh, right now anti-mage a little bit behind they have the initiation fully in their hand it seems like all these fights has been initiated by navi and link if he gets picked off or migo they see him right now here comes angel we gotta need a perfect black hole do they have it shackle on top of life heaven this looks horrible as we see arzar is gonna go down he's gonna mech and walk upwards and looks like we have two supports dying so far and we have trying to get Havos trying to get some kills he's gotta blink out quantic's not gonna chase because they realize well all we have to do is kill that rax and not the anti mage actually angel going to get puppy and gg's gonna be called what a game number two no kidding. Really fast game out of Quantic. This carry tide that they go for with really, really high ganking. I, I literally think the MVP of this game, Angel right here, man. That Blink Dagger made so many early kills, made a giant difference. And the melee barracks is going to go down as well as the ranged one. And we're going to have to move on to the next game. Quantic's up 2-1. to one. They only need one more game to take the series win. Insane play here by Quantic. Yeah, and like Perch says, two to one. The next game will be on Perch Gamers YouTube channel. So I, I know we're kind of like one up on you guys. Go here and go there. Go here and go there. Uh, but uh, thanks to Perch actually allowing me to cast this. This is what's all his games. Uh, I'm just kind of stealing his uh, sh slot here. Uh, so do check, okay, man. do check Perch out on his YouTube channel for game the next one. And if Quantic wins that one, they are gonna be the champions of defense. And uh, we'll see what they could do there. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, cast. And until next time, Luminous and Purge Gamer, signing off.